okay uh, at the revamped uh, raffles hotel we have a uh, raffles junction for every day's fashion we also have uh, the bus at boogie street all right uh, you can have uh, you can find things like five dollar two dollars uh, and still uh, very good uh, very fashionable In terms of art, we have fine art at the Singapore Art Museum. We have a School of Art, La Salle, Singapore. And we also find street art. Okay, this is a very uh, nice piece uh, taken along the Arab Street area Okay, at night. In terms of culture, we have National, uh, sorry, National Library, uh, not National Museum. Okay, we also have very historic private books company, okay, uh, Union uh, Bookstore that has been there for half a century. Okay, so uh, th in terms of location, this really tells you the diversity of such place. Okay, tertiary education, uh, SMU, we have cultural activities uh, such as the uh, Guan Yin Miao, okay, this is a Chinese temple. We also have uh, the Muslim culture, okay, this is a uh, uh, Masjid Dalton, uh, right? <clears throat> okay, so what else? In Bugis, you can find all of these uh, very happening things, okay? All right, so why Guaco Midtown? It's a name that embraces diversity, all right? Why we don't call it Uptown or Downtown, okay? Because Midtown is somewhere that everybody can mix together, everybody have a, a, have a place in such a location. A hub connecting three micro markets, right? Let's look at this location map here. I have uh, highlighted, this is the site of uh, Midtown, Gokome Town 1 and Gokome Town 2, okay? Gokome Town 2 is exactly where the upcoming Midtown Modern is going to be located along the Tan Kui Lan Street. Okay, which are the three micro markets? One is City Hall, all right? So this is the uh, City Hall uh, micro market. Secondly is Bugis, okay? Thirdly is Marina Center. Can you see that uh, this uh, Kwako Midtown 1 and 2 uh, perfectly link all these three uh, all these three micro markets together all right so uh, connectivity is definitely a, a very uh, core uh, matter uh, in terms of in terms of uh, place all right so uh, which are the four mrt stations uh, that is within walking distance firstly is the east west line mrt the uh, okay green line which is our uh, singapore's oldest MRT station as well as the North-South Line MRT station, all right? So all these two are uh, within walking distance uh, and the Downtown Line MRT station is right downstairs of uh, Midtown Modern, right? Circle Line MRT stations, we have Esplanade, we have a Promenade, all also a fully sheltered access to all these four MRT stations and within 10 minutes you can reach all four of these all right okay so which are the places that we can have fully sheltered access to in terms of shopping we have boogies junction uh, boogies plus uh, in terms of hos uh, hospital we have uh, medical uh, services we have raffles hospital we have dual office and uh, shops we have sun tech office and shopping mall and exhi exhibition center as well okay <clears throat> and marina square mall is actually only uh, less than 10 minutes away as i tried uh, on foot and also south beach office and shops okay so uh, these are the commercial settings okay in in this area esplanade uh, raffles hotel raffles city mall okay all these are within full sheltered access. This is very important. Huh? And also, uh, in addition to this, we can walk within 10 minutes to different uh, places. Uh, Tan Kui Lan Street, Liangsha Street, SMB is uh, 
within one minute. Okay, Kirby Street uh, is about three minutes. National Library, the Kwan Im Thong, okay, uh, La Salle College of the Arts, Singling Square, Masjid Sultan, uh, Arab Street, and Chimes. Okay, all these fall into places to create the hype uh, in this area in surrounding Bugis. And of course, we have tertiary uh, education, SMU, and St. Andrew's Cathedral. Okay. So um, in terms of driving wise, are we also well connected to all the places that matters? Okay, Ion Orchard, uh, if you're going to Orchard, it's uh, 10 minutes by Grab or 20 minutes by public transport. Okay, if you are going to Kalang Sports, Hub is seven minutes by Grab only, or fifteen minutes by public transport. Okay, in, uh, going to Changi Airport uh, by taxi is uh, taking you seventeen minutes only. Okay, Marina Bay Sands. Okay, public transport only four minutes. Okay, the downtown line gets you directly there, uh, two stations away only. Okay, and by Grab is uh, six minutes. MBSC as well, six minutes by public transport only. Raffles Place, okay, six minutes by public transport also. And Chinatown, nine minutes by Grab and 14 minutes by public transport. This is how uh, well connected we are, uh, not only in terms of the three micro markets surrounding Bugis area, but also to places that uh, we often visit and the places that matters to us, right? <clears throat> Yeah, and don't forget the nightlife, uh, we have Clark Key and uh, five minutes away only. Okay, all right. Uh, after, um, after all the location attributes, right, uh, which are the two strong pitches uh, I want uh, everybody to understand and to start pitching to your clients, all right? First is Midtown Modern is the one and only CCR integrated project, all right, that carries garden home concept, okay? So uh, three uh, key selling points, one is CCR, the other one is integrated project and carries a garden home concept, okay? Okay, there's a Chinese saying, wu yi xi wei gui, okay? So um, it really simply just uh, tells you the economics principle of the scarcer uh, root is, the pricier it becomes. Okay, so let's see how unique uh, Midtown Modern is. All right, firstly, we look at this article, uh, which is about two years ago. Okay, home buyers are willing to pay more for integrated project. All right, <clears throat> convenience and scarcity are the main reasons. And you can see that integrated project also fetch higher rentals uh, in the, in the comparison district that uh, uh, including district 9, district 16, 19 and 23, all right? Uh, how scarce are integrated projects? This project makes up less than 3% of the total private non-residential, non-landed residential stock, all right? So only 3% of all the condo, uh, condo owners are privileged enough to stay in integrated projects. And the potential supply of these developments may not meet the demand of buyers in the coming years, all right? So this, uh, as, as more and more condos are being built, actually this number is going uh, to get even lower, right? So where are the integrated projects, okay? Um, Hope I haven't missed out any, but these are the integrated project I can find uh, so far. Okay, uh, the first ones include a compass height at the uh, Sengkang and uh, the sentries. This is at uh, at the Boonlay MRT Boonlay MRT station, right? Okay, so uh, the northeastern side actually has the most integrated project, including Water Town in Pongo. Uh, Sengkang Grand at the uh, uh, Bangkok MRT station, uh, Uli residence and Poise residence. 
Okay, why uh, is that so that uh, so many uh, integrated projects are along the east, uh, northeast line, the purple line? Okay, because this is a relatively newer MRT line and the uh, surrounding towns are uh, relatively newly uh, being developed. Okay, so uh, the master planning actually allows more such land to be used as integrated project. And in the north, we have the North Park residence. Uh, in the west, we have Helian residence. In the RCR, we have uh, Badok residence uh, and also R12. Okay, so are there many integrated projects in the core central region? Okay. Uh, as far as I can gather, uh, only five such projects uh, we can find in the core central region. Um, in the Orchard area, we have Orchard Residence. Uh, in Tanjong Paga, we have Wallet Residence. In Bugis area, we have Dual Residence and South Beach Residence. And in the downtown core, uh, I mean uh, Marina Bay area, we have Marina One Residence. Okay, why, why are integrated projects in shortage in the core central area. These are the few reasons. Firstly, a scarcity of vacant land in the CCR for a mega project. Okay, so such integrated project must sit on a substantial uh, big piece of land. Okay, so um, such land is very scarce in the core central region. The scarcity of vacant land on top of existing MRT stations. We talk about the uh, purple line because it's a newer MRT line. So <clears throat> the allowance of uh, more land for such project is uh, ample. But on top of, of existing MRT lines such as the green line, uh, we can only find very few projects of such, uh, such uh, scale in, uh, on top of the MRT stations. Uh, thirdly and most importantly, complexity of building a mega project on top of MRT stations and existing tunnel networks calls for only experienced developers or even consortiums of big developers. Okay, because um, imagine you want to build this uh, midtown modern on top of Tan Kui Lan Street, but uh, downstairs you have the <coughs> uh, downtown line MRT station. You have tunnel linkage from MRT station to uh, to the Boogies Junction a, uh, site to also to the dual site, and and the upcoming we have a tunnel linkage to Guaco Midtown One as well to the office. So um, such extensive tunnel network makes it very difficult for the contractors as well as developers to plan how to how to make a product on top of it. All right, so let's look at this article. Um, Tan Kui Lan site only attracted two bids, all right, uh, when it put up for tender. Who, who are the two bidders? One is a, a joint venture between Guaco Land and Hong Leong, okay? So two mega developers uh, join hand to uh, put up the top bid for this land. The second bidder is a joint venture between CDL and MCL land, also very renowned developer, okay? So only those big ones, experienced ones, are uh, there to put in a bid, okay? And the margin between the two uh, is quite narrow, it's 4.2% uh, between the two only, okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, in contrast, right, uh, we know the M has been very successful this year. Uh, the middle road site received 10 bits, okay, uh, because the site is so much simpler to develop compared to uh, Midtown Modern, all right. Okay, <clears throat> the share comparison on the number of bidders highlight the challenge of developing such an integrated site, okay. Then we look at uh, what's the PSF for a uh, land price for Tan Kui Lan site, 1535. Okay, it's actually not very far away from the, the M site, which is 1458, okay? Less than 10% difference in terms of land price. So a lot of emphasis really goes to the experience of how to develop the site. And also 
uh, we noticed the timing of uh, Gokulam purchasing the site is uh, back in 2019. Eh? Okay, that then uh, developers are still in the mid of launching their uh, existing projects, right? So they are not so hungry for land. That is the best time to enter the market and buy land, all right? So if we are going to bid the country land site again today when uh, we know that the developer stock are running low and developers are, are hungry for land. Imagine what is the land price we can fetch today. Probably I can say safely it's above 1007 or to 1008 already. Right? <clears throat> okay, land cost is quite similar to the M. Okay, despite Midtown Modern site have many favorable attributes. All right, we have very good frontage. We are direct linked to the MRT station and we are direct linked to different uh, important places uh, like offices and uh, shopping malls as well. Okay, uh, just now I mentioned that the, the existing five integrated projects in the CCR region, but does any of them carry a garden home concept, all right? Um, in Singapore's uh, setting, right, uh, because Singapore is 100% urbanized, right, so uh, probably we, we are not so uh, into garden living, but imagine in, in the US, in the Western countries, where are the rich people actually, where do they want to stay? Many of them actually stay in the countryside because after work, uh, they do want to feel a uh, a slow momentum in their life and uh, enjoy the peacefulness, right? So garden home is really something to, uh, to, to pursue for the rich people, all right? So it's very rare uh, in the CCR region that we can have a garden home concept on top of an integrated project. Okay, in summary, uh, why is Midtown Modern highly sought after? Integrated project with Commercial and Transportation Hub, located in down, uh, downtown core, which is part of core central region and a very strong garden home concept. Okay, second pitch I want to, uh, I want to uh, let you guys know is the best of three worlds, right? Uh, many projects call them best of two worlds, both worlds, but do they, are they really best of uh, both worlds? or uh, is Midtown Modern the, uh, really defines the best of three worlds um, in terms of connectivity, in terms of city bus, and in terms of tranquility, All right? This is a, a photo I have taken uh, right across the site, okay? So uh, it's really right across uh, Bugis Junction area and is uh, linked by underground tunnel to Bugis Junction directly, okay? This is how good the concept is, All right? <clears throat> Concept can make or break a development. That is a uh, Guoco Lens uh, interview in a uh, Property Guru article, right? So Guoco Lens philosophy is to go for sites which it believes to have great potential and have strong product, which can transform the district. All right. So uh, Guoco Lens has experience in transforming Tanjong Paga. Now is the time they bring this whole concept into Bugis area. Okay, strategic management is also essential. Okay, so compare some mixed development with an integrated project, right? Or even we compare uh, Midtown Modern compared to Duo, for example. Duo, um, what is lacking is a central management, right? So uh, we all know that dual office tower has been sold, the hotel tower has been sold. So uh, developer is really not looking into the future uh, future maintenance of this project uh, to take care of it, right? But on the other side, uh, Guaco Lens management is going to take care of the value of the property, especially the commercial, the outlook of the property to benefit the owners and tenants in the longer term, all right? We, <clears throat> when we invest in a product, we need to think of the exit strategy, right? 10 years down the road, will the development looks 
uh, tray already, or will the developers, uh, will the development still stand out, all right, uh, against the time influence? Okay, um, for the residential portion, uh, Midtown Modern really is a mirror or an upgraded version of Martin Modern. But when the uh, when developer was, uh, Gokolan was thinking of how to conceptualize Martin Modern, uh, they focused on the fact that people today live a very hectic life, right? So they want to create a home where time slows down and people can recharge physically and mentally. So it's a home that is within a botanical garden, all right? This is what I have highlighted before, and 80% uh, of the land goes to greenery and landscaping as well. So imagine a product that uh, underground, we have a very busy uh, tunnel network that links both uh, downtown line and uh, green line MRT station. On the street level, it's very happening something, uh, it's something like uh, Tower, all right. So you have event spaces for people to exercise, or for the uh, weekend market to be held uh, in the public spaces. And on top of such bars, right, when you step back home, you feel the tranquility. You feel the garden-like homes on top of such a busy CBD area, which is so amazing, right? All right, so this is the concept of uh, Midtown Modern, basically, all right? And Brocco Land is a firm believer of 80-20 rule, right? What is 80%? 80% goes to the landscaping, all right? We can have something similar to the Martin Modern, all right? Very large landscaping. And uh, Chris will give you a timeline uh, later. Uh, when we are going to release some teaser info for you to share with your buyers, all right? Okay, another project, Mayor mentioned, uh, Boko Land also uh, implement this 80-20 rule, right? Uh, the building only occupies 20% of the landscape, okay? So what is Midtown Modern again? Integrated connectivity at the core, bus of boogies below the, your home, and botanical garden above, all right? And why invest, all right? And why invest in Midtown Modern, okay? This is a award-winning developer, right? <clears throat> and they do always redefine luxury living, all right? They always want to exceed uh, what they have done and uh, create a new frontier of luxury living. And they always reward early buyers, all right? So this is uh, the most recent uh, Property Guru Award, which uh, Guacolé has earned, right? And a strong record of redefining luxury residence, uh, including the first one, uh, Guru residence, second one is Leiden residence, and third one is Wallet residence. And on top of that, of course, we know that Martin Modern is another level of luxury. So uh, to market, to understand more about Midtown Modern, uh, if you have the chance to go and visit Goodwood Residence, Leiden Residence, and Wallet Residence. All right. <clears throat> okay, um, if you have bought Martin Modern right at the launch phase, right, you can see that uh, the average price is about 2000 to 2001, all right? <clears throat> but look at just one year later, less than one year later, the price has shot up to about $2,007 per square foot. And this is the same stack. Uh. We are not comparing bigger units to smaller units, all right? So this 20% or 30% increment is really a very handsome paper gain for the earlier buyers, all right? So uh, share this with your buyers and uh, do ask them, invite them to come down uh, during the launch phase. Okay, so um, with this, I finished my section and uh, I pass the time to Richard to uh, talk about the future transformation of this uh, uh, boogies and the uh, midtown area. Um, he, he really uh, walked the ground and, and cover. <laughs> he did an exercise around the whole boogies area by himself, uh, covering areas, 
places of interest around Bugis area. Okay, so, so on my part, I will just cover mainly on four parts. Um, A, connectivity, B, of course, the rejuvenation plan, and C, are uh, there still upside? A common question that your clients will throw you, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, my set of slides can, can help you a little on that. And of course, um, I, I love to re-emphasize the Guaco Lens branding. Okay, um, so some of the slides Jason has uh, actually uh, 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 shared, but uh, I just want to re-emphasize that, yes, the slides over here does present Squaco Midtown, but as you all know that the, the up and coming Midtown modern is a continuation of uh, a Guato, Guaco Midtown. Therefore, um, the Guaco Midtown story or Midtown Bay story has the direct influence towards the Midtown modern. As you can see from here, as you can see from here, the development for Midtown Modern is located where my cursor is circling and linked towards Midtown Modern and from Midtown, sorry, and uh, Guaco Mid Bay, Guaco Midtown Bay. And from Guaco Midtown Bay, it does have connectivities towards the rest of the other main, main developments around the area. For example, Suntec City Mall, South Beach, Dual, even Bugis Junction, of course, Jason has mentioned the Bugis MRT. So it is literally convenient at your full step. Okay. Okay, so for this Guaco land, I have shared with all of you, Midtown Bay it is the heart of the whole area. And of course, uh, Midtown Modern in time to come definitely will also be the heart of the whole area itself. Why do I say that? It's because of the connectivity to different areas around the area. And of course, if you have clients looking for investments, Guaco Midtown has units of one and two bathers, which is also ideal for uh, investment purposes. Uh, mainly supported by a lot of MNC companies in the vicinity. If you look at it, uh, from the left to right or in the clockwise position, you see that all the MNC companies and these are the companies that will support the rental in once it's being done up. And having a smaller size units within uh, Guaco Midtown and Midtown Bay, it does help in terms of rentability as compared to bigger units of two bedrooms in South Beach. And uh, yes, okay. All right, this is the illustration. Okay, so I jump into the rejuvenation plan. Um, we will go through the completed projects like the Suntec City has done the revamp back uh, and completed in 2015. Um, Dual completed in 2016. Raffles Hotel is up and running. We have the South Beach completed in 2015 as well. And Raffles Hospital that's being revamped and completed in 2019. Okay, additional news, uh, additional news on a entity that joins in the re rejuvenation plan would be the new shore, which is the new shore tower. All right, it is located in between Midtown Bay and uh, Midtown Modern. All right, so, and of late, the architect design is actually launched, published on uh, uh, newspapers. And uh, this will be the uh, this will be the design of the whole architect. And if you can understand, if you look at the design, it, it blends in towards the the whole area. So this whole area will be rejuvenated with its new look, new developments in the, around the area. Developments like uh, Duo, South Beach, have done their part. So right now it will be the Guaco Midtown, and of course the incoming Shaw Towers. Okay, so what's an up and coming? Tan Kui Lan, which is our uh, Guaco Midtown. Middle Road, we have the M, Shaw, and Waterloo, which is the hotel, which is some distance away. So looking at the heart of the Bugis area, we are complete. All right, once the development is up, this whole area is complete in terms of the look. And what's up and coming? We have the uh, North-South Corridor. It will be Singapore's first integrated transport corridor featuring continuous bus lane and cycling track routes. And of course, 
we have the Bugis Street and Bugis Village with, with a single operator to be appointed to manage the whole area. Okay, so in a nutshell, if you put everything together, the whole beach road transformation still needs some time. And the time is heavily on Guaco Midtown, Midtown Modern, and of course, the Shaw Tower. So are there still upside in the development? So one for yes, two for no. I just like to see the uh, participants. All right, are there still upside? Give your, give your most honest uh, response to it. Is there upside? One for yes, two for no. Let me just have a look. One, 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 one. Wow, a lot of one. Huh? That's, that's very positive. Huh? Okay, 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 okay. That's very positive. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm doing Zoom now if I'm... Okay, Zendra was saying, yes, need to exit in time. Okay, uh, we are not fortune teller, huh? so we can't better time the market. But what we are certain, we will provide facts. All right, we are, we are we will provide facts to 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 support this uh question. Okay, yes, there will still be an upside. Okay, so but before we go on to upside, let me just bring everyone on the same note on the definition of downtown core. All right, downtown core bounded by Rocho to the north, Kalang to the northeast, Marina East, Marina South, and you know, this is the direct direct explanation or definition of downtown core. All right. So just in case your clients were to ask you, do you know what is the definition of downtown core? Where, are, where is the extremities of downtown core? It will be in short, CBD area all the way towards Kalang area. All right. And the north would be the Kalang, Kalang area and for it, the down period will be over here. So, so you must actually know where, where is, or, or rather how big is downtown core so that you can actually explain to your client. So of course, downtown, Midtown, and of course, I, I have no idea what they're going to name over here. And therefore, you know, Midtown is where uh, uh, the Guaco Midtown will be. Okay, the answer is yes, there's still, there is still upside if you were to market this to your clients. Please explain to them the reason why. Look at the Kalang location, all right? Midtown, Midtown, is, lo Midtown is, lo is located over here. Midtown Modern is located over here. Okay, now you have a look at Kalang. Kalang it is still located within downtown core, but it is on the extremity of the downtown core. So Kalang itself, this plot of land will be the very last plot of land for development. And this plot of land is huge. Let me, let me bring you through the slide. All right. So I dig up the master plan. So you compare 2004 master plan and versus 2009, 2009 uh, master plan, you will see a vast difference in terms of its zoning from residential component, education component into a white site over here. All right, into a white site. White site represents anything. All right, a developer who purchased this land can do up anything, hotel, office, residential, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, the green, of course, the green over here represents the garden or yeah, or greenery or park. Okay, but there is a downside. This Kampong Bugis GLS site is up for tender. However, whoever tendered this, whoever is going to submit a tender for this plot of land has to submit an overall concept and approved by URA. So in short, it doesn't represent that as a developer, you have the money, you can buy the land you whoever wants to buy this land has to have a concept that jows in the overall concept of the master plan all right to jow in with the whole master plan itself then ura will then approve of the concept and sell to the developer okay so the question is if this is going to be the last white site in the whole downtown core will the price be priced higher than the previous uh, my answer to you is yes so you may want to use this stack deck of slides and share it to your client that there is still upside. Okay, Guacoland branding, we can't, we can't run away from it. Um, it has established itself as a luxury developer and of late, of course, everyone was saying that, you know, Dyson 
afford to purchase the the ultra panels of 21,000 square feet. Um, and of course, later it sells away. All right. So your client may ask you, may tell you that, oh, another person uh, bought it from Mr. Dyson. But the thing is, out of the ultra penthouses in the world, there are a total of 11. And out of 11, there are six ultra penthouses in Singapore. And, and Wallick Residence is definitely one of them. So out of so many ultra penthouses, why did Mr. Dyson choose to purchase this penthouse? And why did the other buyer who buy it from Mr. Dyson choose to buy over from this pen, uh, buy, buy this penthouse? It speaks volume of the purchase, no doubt that they have changed hands. Okay, so is the story for Guaco Midtown a new story formed by Guaco Land? The answer is no. In fact, uh, Guaco Towers, as shown in the slide over here, it is their first flagship development. And this development has created success in the whole Tanjong Paga estate, Tanjong Paga area as well. Okay, so with the experience and the successful uh, uh, with a successful experience at Guaco Tower, this experience will be duplicated in the yeah, Guaco Midtown story, in both Midtown Bay and Midtown Modern. So in fact, if you want to, uh, your clients to experience uh, what the future of uh, Guaco story is about, you can actually bring them to Guaco Towers and let them have a few. Jenny raised her hand. Jenny, um, let me see. Okay, Jenny, if you have any questions later, you voice it up about how. Oh. Okay, so what did they what did they do to the Tanjung Paga area? They brought in vibrant lifestyle, arts and entertainment, business and education. All right. Basically, they bring up in short, they bring up the vibrancy in Tanjung Paga area. Okay. And of course, rejuvenating Tanjung Paga was a successful one by them. They reshaped the whole Tanjong Paga as a prime business and lifestyle center. The, even the public spaces has been used for social hut, like all this like activities, even uh, uh, kickboxing classes, etc., are being conducted in the square, which my cursor is circling. All right. So it is a transformation of Tanjong Paga district. All right. So likewise, with the same modality by 2022 or slash 2023, Guacoland is set to do the same for the Beach Road District. And in short, that is called the duplication of success towards the Guacoland, uh, Guaco Midtown story. Okay, so um, the developer itself, Guacoland, they want to be the leader in urban rejuvenation. All right, an interesting article over here, which I see about certain pointers uh, uh, from the group MD. Okay, he brought up a few pointers which I have I have summarized over here. Um, in order to make the city living attractive, he suggested the integrated development um, to have enrichment facilities or even childcare centers. You know, integrating into the high rise high rise schools into the developments. So in order to make the city center more attractive, they have to make it even more like a, a housing estate, where it is very well planned with all the social and community amenities. So an analogy of a Moscow hierarchy of needs, they keep pushing and the actualization type of needs in our development is just a mixed uh, development over here. So, so just imagine that they have this vision of having, uh, uh, throwing this towards you, to URA to have a thinker of, can there be schools within downtown area? Just imagine if that is available in downtown, you can foresee people shifting their bags and moving into the downtown area, especially the, uh, 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 if you ask me, locals, both locals and foreigners. And who has this power to, to influence uh, URA or trigger their thoughts on this? I would say the group ND has the, 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 the power to do so because, because Mr. Cheng himself, he used to hold the leadership positions at the center of liberal cities in URA. In short, he used to be the city planner for Tanjong Paga under URA. So he is indirectly connected to URA and his words does weigh a thing or two. 
uh, when he throws such such uh, suggestions to uh, URA. In fact, just to share with you one information on Midtown Bay, when the plot is up for tender, under underground passageway is isn't in the plan. It was Mr. Cheng who threw this idea to URA, appealed to URA, and eventually when the retender comes out. Uh, it states an additional criteria for any developers to purchase this land to dig an underground passageway linked towards Duo and towards the uh, Bugis MRT. And that, that is actually the connectivity of it. And if you look at uh, Midtown Bay itself, it is very future-proof. It is very future-proof because in time to come by 2040, URA envisaged that all, all areas to, be, to have a shelter walkway. And if you look at look at Midtown Bay itself, it is already future proof. With their walkways all covered up with uh, uh, shelter. Okay, so I, I shared with you earlier about the, the tycoon of Mr. Dyson buying the biggest penthouse in Singapore. So quality it is what I I, I think this uh, ultra high net worth are looking for. So in terms of quality, in, in terms of uh, material use, you can always assure your clients on the Quaco Lens branding. Okay, so, um, some of the awards with, uh, with Jason, which Jason actually sh uh, shared earlier. And of course, in a nutshell, the latest uh, awards that they received. Okay, so Quaco Lens is set to be, is set to, to make a game change in the Boogies area, rejuvenating the area, and of course, you'll be expecting the space, the public spaces um, to be similar to Tanjong Paga, the Kwako Tower, to connect and engage and redefine the way of leasing. When we talk about redefining the way of leasing, we are looking into uh, Midtown Bay. You're looking at the uh, one, two bather. And if you do realize in Midtown Bay, it is, there are only two bather duplexes and three bather duplexes in the whole downtown, downtown core. Of course, when Midtown, Midtown Modern is up and running, uh, I believe there will be new concepts by uh, Guacoland itself. Of course, not to mention, they, always, they are always the forefront of luxury city living. Okay, so um, in a nutshell, I just shared with you four, four different pointers. So if you, need, if you need my information on the master plan and all, um, later you can drop us a text, I'll send you the rejuvenation plan and all. Okay, so with this, I'll hand over to Chris. Uh, but however, just want to remind you is that currently, uh, Midtown Bay, it is still selling well. Uh, and also, we also have made mentioned these three projects, the short track is together uh, at Kalang area. Okay, so uh, my focus is a shorter version, but what we need to know now is that where or how uh, we as a property agent can make money from the project. I think that is the most important. Uh, that's why you are in, in, in our project team for ERA here. So um, I have a few targets, uh, audiences that we have compiled. So basically uh, what we did is that we know who are the profile of people who came and visit the show flat. We also know who are the people who have bought uh, Midtown. Okay, and not just Midtown, uh, also the projects that is, is like integrated in the uh, core area, uh, the downtown area, the similar concept of people. So generally, uh, I want to highlight to you, most likely the customer that have interest in Midtown will have uh, following characteristic of their behavior and also where are they from, okay? So first group of people that you need to know are the people who actually make money uh, last year uh, during COVID period. And who are they? The people who actually bought a lot of stocks and shares when the market was down, okay? When the COVID happened uh, for two markets here. First market, people who make money from Swiss Times, STI. If you look at the, 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 the volume and the index for Swiss Times for Singapore, in March, April, the time when the COVID happened and until now, you look at how much the index has increased. So a lot of Singaporeans who are very well versed in investing in stock and share, actually they are very happy. Okay, they may some of them may maybe lose money from their business investment. Some of them who are employed who maybe have a pay cut. But according to what we market, including all the other countries, but downtrend is one of the major ones. And if you look at the gradient of the increment of the index of Dow Jones, it is much more than straight times index, STI. 
So in other words, COVID actually created a situation where a lot of investors actually make a lot of money. Okay, And these are fast money because if you know, stock and shares are very quickly, uh, you can buy and sell within one day you know, or things like that. So when people make money, they tend to reinvest. And of course, some of them, they will reinvest back into stock and shares, but there are also people who look at opportunity in real estate because it's more stable in the sense. So they also put their money into real estate. Okay, So this group of people, uh, majority are also the people that will come and see the project of Midtown. Okay, uh? So remember, this is the group of people. Second group of people that currently are also looking into buying the property in Singapore uh, are also people who make money from currency. Okay, who are they? If you look at the Singapore dollar to uh, uh, USD exchange rates, right? Uh, pe the, the, the volatility of US and all those things make it very interesting for a lot of investors to look, either make money from foreign currency exchange, Forex, or after they make money already, they also look into real estate. Okay, but if you look at not so far away to USD, if you look at just the ringgit itself, why there are so many Malaysians uh, or Malaysians uh, or PR in Singapore who are Malaysians are uh, buying into Singapore real estate is because of the currency. Okay, if you look at the 10 years chart of ringgit versus Singapore dollar, it was two dollars something uh, ringgit to one Singapore dollar 10 years ago versus now three over dollars uh, ring three, three over ringgits to one Singapore dollar. So imagine if a Malaysian who actually invested in Singapore property 10 years ago, imagine how much they have made already, okay? And the other group of people who are actually Indonesian, okay? Same thing, if you look at the Indonesian rupiah, the drop in Indonesian rupiah is actually even much more than the ringgit, okay? So that's why this explains to a lot of people why foreigners are buying into Singapore property. It is not just as a matter of uh, want to transfer their money out. It's because they want to preserve their wealth. So wealth preservation, it's a very important key problem for some wealthier people, okay? Because if you know that you are a multimillionaire, okay, you may be not a lot, maybe 10 million US dollar. How do you preserve this 10 million US dollar for the next 10 years to come, okay? Versus if, even if you have more money, like for example, 100 million to, you know, half 500 million uh, US dollar worth of, of wealth, that is where a lot of these families set up family offices in Singapore. I think you read the news for the past one to two years. There are so many overseas uh, customers with family have family offices in Singapore. So this is a way for them to preserve wealth. So imagine if you have a lot of money, okay, or you have some money, okay, not a lot, but you have some money, but your currency is in ringgit, rupiah, or any currencies that is weaker than Singapore dollar, okay? You, you will find ways to make sure that you preserve it. Okay, so why they choose Singapore dollar is because of the nature of Singapore dollar. Singapore dollar, if you know, it is not a very free trade kind of, uh, of, of, of currency. It is actually well controlled. Uh, I just want to bring you to a bit of economics. So Singapore dollar is always controlled by MAS. Okay, so it is by the width and the slope of the band. Okay, so if you look at the chart here, okay, this is, this is how Singapore dollar is being uh, controlled. So first thing first, the Singapore dollar is actually putting the basket of foreign currencies that Singapore trade the most with. Okay, so countries that Singapore trade the most with is part of this basket of currencies. Okay, and the MAS control the band, which is this whole thing is a band. Okay, the, the, the steeper the band means that the Singapore dollar will be able to appreciate uh, faster or higher. And the narrower the band, okay, which means that the Singapore dollar will be less fluctuation, means that it is well, well controlled. So, so because of this nature, okay, the government for COVID-19 period here, they already mentioned that they want to remain a stability of the Singapore dollar, not too strong so that it will not affect our this, uh, uh, exports, but not too weak so that it will harm our, 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 our currency as well. So because of this characteristic of Singapore dollar, rich people or foreigners, they always like to bring their funds into Singapore, okay? So where are the buyers? Okay, so if you look at this, this uh, one of the latest URA uh, chart here, okay? If you look, okay, so I just go through with you. Uh, new sales means project sales. sub sale means project under construction, but have a, have a sale. Resale means already CSC completed and it is a resale. So if you look at the last uh, 3Q 2020, okay? 
the total of the these are uh, sales here. Okay, if you look at uncompleted, which is what we are selling, like midtown, all these are uncompleted new sales. Three thousand over uh, units sold uh, in three quarter. If you look at all the previous years, all the way under two zero one seven, it is indeed very very healthy and very very active. Okay, in, even you look at the subs, uh, the the uh, resale units. Okay, three thousand four hundred sixty seven. The resale market for property in Singapore is also also very healthy, even though we are in COVID still. Okay, it is actually pretty high as if you compare even to two zero one seven, two zero one eight. Okay, only have a dip which is uh, at the 2Q for last year, which the, during the circuit breaker time. So if you look at the total of the project sales plus resale plus sub-sale, uh, for the 3Q last year, we already hit 7,000 plus as a total. And you look at all this, it is actually almost the all-time high that you know, we have for the past few years here. So that is why Singapore real estate is very, very strong. Okay, that's why a lot of our teammates here, including yourself listening, you have been closing deals, okay, whether from projects or whether from resale. But more importantly, I think this, uh, I've been showing this uh, article from uh, Business Times for a few times up now, but it, it says about who are the buyers that buys property in Singapore. Okay, so I enlarge this version here. Most of us, we think that uh, a lot of the more luxury project or more downtown project, the buyers are from uh, foreigners, from other countries. But the real situation is not such, okay? If you look at the, the breakdown in prices, half a million, half a million to one million, and so on, up to five million and above. Yes, Chinese, okay, has a big pool of buyers that, that bought into Singapore property, especially the five million and above properties here, okay? But for Malaysian, okay, and Indonesian, okay, and even some Indians, okay, Malaysia also have a very big part to uh, of, of the buyers here who bought into Singapore properties here. But the biggest, biggest pool of buyer that we have is actually the Singaporean, okay? If you look at the numbers, uh, you add on 2,000 plus for property ranges from half a mil to one mil, 4,000 plus from one mil to 1.5. Oh, by the way, these are the uh, figures for 2020 January and October, okay? If going up even to up to 2 million, okay, it is all in the thousand range, which is four digit numbers. So I know some teammates has been trying to say that I want to target foreigners, I want to tap into the Chinese market. But seriously, if you look at, if you ask us the, the director in charge for a lot of projects here, uh, when we issue the option, most of the options we are issuing is to Singaporean. Okay, yes, some of the Singaporeans were not Singaporean before means that they actually converted from PR to become Singaporean, including Chinese, including Malaysians, including Indonesian, okay? But however, they are already Singaporean, means that where are the buyers? The buyers are in Singapore, okay? So don't keep thinking about, uh, you know, uh, reaching out to the foreigners, going into the foreign countries, you know, in order for you to bring them in. Yes, you can do that, but it takes time for you to build the kind of uh, network over in other people's country. A lot of things are already in Singapore, okay? As long as you do proper marketing of the project, especially the Midtown, okay, which is one of the projects that actually attracted both local buyers and also foreigners, you should be able to get a pool of buyers that are interested to come in, okay? So that's why important point is that don't think too much about where is the buyers and then you keep thinking and thinking but no action taken, you will not find any buyers. But those of the agents who take action, Okay, we started to already, because I've seen newspaper advertisement, I've seen property guru, some of the agents already put Midtown Modern uh, into their, uh, their portfolios of project marketing. They already have inquiries because I have, I have agents who text me, Chris, when can I see the show flat? Uh, Chris, can I have more information uh, of the breakdown of the unit, which we do not have yet at the moment. Okay, so that's why it's very important for you to start reaching out today here. The other thing that is even more important if you look at our uh, Singapore Property Price Index, the PPR, okay, until uh, the, the latest one is Q4 2020, which is the uh, flash estimate. If you look at the three lines, uh, the one yellow color with the triangle, the one is OCR, Outer Central Region. The one with the black color square is actually RCR, which is the city fringe. And the other one, the CCR is the blue color one. Okay, so if you look at the last few quarters, OCR, okay, the increment is, 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 is steep going up. So the prices has gone up quite a fair bit. 
RCR, the prices has actually gone up even higher, faster than uh, OCR. But however, if you look at CCR, which Midtown Model, Midtown Bay is located here, okay, it's actually quite flat. Uh. It is still quite flat. So what is the reason that the CCR, including like Orchard, you know, Marina area, all this CCR area, the, 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 the price is still flat? Okay, because this location of the CCR, we get buyers from two segments, locals and foreigners. Okay, where the RCR and OCR, most of the buyers are still actually locals, if, 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 if you know. Okay, so currently we all know that the foreigners cannot come to Singapore uh, because uh, of COVID, they can't travel down here. We have a lot of foreigners who still want to physically come to Singapore before they make the purchase. I talked to a lot of agents who are having Indonesian customers their Indonesian customers are ready to purchase, okay? But they want to come here at least to look at the location or the show flight, some of them, before they make the purchase. Some of them, the money already in Singapore. We also have a lot of Chinese, uh, Hong Konger, Taiwanese, South, South Korean as well, some European, okay, especially from UK as well. They also want to buy into Singapore property, especially the CCR area here. But they can't come down here for physically to know about the location. So they're waiting for the COVID to over so that they can come here. So that is the reason why, if you ask me, okay, if the customer who wants to buy something that is still at value, okay, you, you, they should seriously consider CCR at the moment. Because CCR, if you look at the, the price here, it is still very attractive. Okay? So that's why you have to start working now in order for you to uh, make sure that you don't miss that wave. Okay, I just want to highlight to you one more thing. Project marketing is always about capturing the correct cycle. Okay, uh, project sales is always typically like this. When you have a preview launch, we have a group of buyers ready to buy, they bought. Then the project will slow down. Then after a few months later, uh, you will come back again, slow down, come back again, slow down. So looking at the CCR, currently it's actually not that active if you compare with all our OCR and RCR launches, okay, from all the projects that you have seen uh, at the end of last year. So CCR, time will come, okay? And maybe Midtown model will be the one to kickstart the whole uh, uh, uptrend of CCR, okay? Because Midtown is actually a very, very big scale project here. So 